The Mesozoic was a long, vicious period of our Earth's history. The age of reptiles, with dinosaurs ruling the land, pterosaurs in the skies, and a variety of marine reptiles controlling the seas. Scientific thinking in the early 1900s held that dinosaurs were less evolved, slower, and inferior to mammals. But not only has that idea been shown to be wrong, non-avian dinosaurs had serious advantages over mammals in many ways. For example, dinosaurs had a much more efficient respiratory system than mammals, employing a unidirectional respiratory system. In addition, they had pneumatized bones and air sacs throughout their body, making their bodies lighter, even when having similar muscle or bone mass. This had a number of benefits, but in essence, it made them more efficient, able to maintain on less resources. However, one question we can ask is, what groups of mammals, if any, could survive in the Mesozoic? I think it is important to note that as far as we know, time travel is not possible, and as such, taking populations of modern animals back in time tens of millions of years is entirely impossible, even if it does present an interesting thought experiment. Whales, the majestic giants of our modern oceans, have evolved since the beginning of the Cenozoic to become the sophisticated and specialized creatures they are today. If these cetaceans were to be transported back to the Mesozoic era, somewhere between 230 and 66 million years ago, there are a few things which would indicate they could be successful. Firstly, the Mesozoic seas were teeming with life, offering a diverse range of prey for whales. Between fish and microorganisms, whether it were baleen or toothed whales, there would be plenty of available food. These animals were already preyed upon by a host of marine reptiles. However, whales would have one main advantage over the predators of the time, that is their echolocation abilities. No marine reptile is known to have evolved echolocation, meaning they would operate off of smell and sight. This means that in deep seas or at night, whales would have an advantage as they would have a more efficient method of sensing their environment. Additionally, especially in pods, the social structures and communication abilities of whales would increase their chances of surviving in the Mesozoic seas. However, they would encounter very heavy opposition. The Mesozoic oceans had their share of predators, like the ichthyosaurs, plesiosaurs, pliosaurs, and mosasaurs. Also, the predators of the time were much larger than most in modern oceans. While the coordinated tactics of toothed whales are effective, an encounter with a single hyperpredatory pliosaur weighing more than 40 tons could decimate if not completely destroy a pod. Additionally, the Mesozoic era had far warmer global temperatures, and modern whales for the most part prefer cooler oceans, meaning modern cetaceans could probably only live in oceans to the far north and south. Small felines such as lynx and wildcats are agile, stealthy, and adaptive predators that have evolved to master a variety of habitats in today's ecosystems. If these carnivores were to be transported back to the Mesozoic, especially in the late to end Cretaceous, there are several reasons to believe they would be successful. Firstly, the Mesozoic landscape was rich in biodiversity, much more diverse than today, offering a plethora of potential prey for these felines ranging from small reptiles to early mammals and various avian species. The keen senses of wildcats, especially their acute hearing and night vision, would provide them with a predatory edge in detecting and hunting these creatures. Almost all Cenozoic mammals were nocturnal, and while this evolved as a defense mechanism to avoid competition with dinosaurs, modern cats are usually very active at night as it increases the likelihood of a successful hunt. They could fill the same niche as the nocturnal predatory mammals of the time, but with slightly more advanced or specialized adaptations for this lifestyle, they would be able to outcompete the nocturnal predatory mammals of the time while avoiding competition with dinosaurs. Also, the adaptability of felines to different environments, from deserts to forests, and from the frigid north to the Kalahari, suggests a potential resilience to the varying climates of the Mesozoic. Finally, primates. The order of mammals, which we belong to, have particularly unique morphology and behaviors. These would be very unique traits in the Cretaceous. Their intelligence and adaptability also could allow them to exploit a variety of ecological niches and respond to environmental challenges. Primates are known for their high degree of behavioral flexibility and problem-solving abilities. Additionally, the social structures and communication systems of primates 
from vocalizations to grooming behaviors, would foster group cohesion and cooperative behaviors, and this could give them advantages compared to less social dinosaurs. The late Cretaceous was a time of lush and varied vegetation, with the first flowering plants diversifying rapidly. This could provide an abundant food source for primates, as they primarily consume fruits and leaves. The diverse arboreal habitats would also offer primates opportunities for shelter and protection from terrestrial predators. All primates have fruit as a major part of their diet, and although fruit did not evolve until the end Cretaceous, barring the survival of primates for most of the Mesozoic, the presence of fruit could open the niches apes and monkeys fill in this period. Primates like baboons and gorillas are likely too bound to the ground to survive in the end Cretaceous, as they would face predation too heavy to hold stable populations. Also primates like orangutans who are too heavily frugivorous also could not survive, as there would not be a stable or plentiful enough food source. However, chimpanzees and bonobos consume a wide variety of foods and are also arboreal enough to avoid the most oppressive predators of the time. If a large number of animals were to be transported back to the late Cretaceous period in the perfect habitat, they may be able to establish a stable population, although the incomplete nature of the fossil record does certainly hold this in question. We only know a small percentage of the species living at any time in the past, and so it is possible if not likely there were dinosaur and pterosaur species at the time that would rapidly, if not immediately, outcompete any primates introduced. Many tapajarid pterosaurs specifically are thought to have limited flight capabilities and are thought to have been arboreal and herbivorous, and as such, would be in competition for the same food sources if they were in the same environment. There is one problem, however, that all these mammals would face. Oxygen levels varied quite a bit during the Mesozoic, Today, around 21% of the atmosphere is oxygen, but in the Mesozoic, the oxygen levels varied between 12 and 35%. This was not as consequential for the mammals at the time due to their minuscule size. And the dominant archosaurs of the time, dinosaurs, pterosaurs, and crocodilians, could handle lower oxygen levels due to their far more efficient respiratory systems. However, if these mammals were introduced, they could go extinct due to heavy pressure from dropping oxygen levels. The marine reptiles did not have as advanced respiratory systems as the archosaurs, although they probably had a very primitive version of it, and in combination with their slower metabolism, they may have had significantly lower oxygen requirements, meaning whales would still face more aerobically efficient competition. This is purely hypothetical, although it is interesting and is a fascinating way to explore the morphological and physiological differences between mammals, reptilians, and archosaurs. If there are any other groups you think could do well, let me know in the comments below. Have a good day, everyone.